This is little Katie Peason in, and today I'm going to show you some really awesome tips for building metal earth models. Okay, prepare to have your mind blown. I know. Oh my god. You're welcome. I got this magnet set at Hobby Lobby for three dollars. I put the sticky back magnet on a piece of paper and I set it in a tray. It allows you to pull it out of a tray and bend it. This is helpful when you have a big part that doesn't come up on the magnet. I got these magnets at Walmart. They're perfect because they're not too strong where they would like pick up pieces that you don't want to pick up. And it's like they have a little handle so they're really easy to hold in your hand. Tools. Cuticle cutters for removing the pieces. I got those in a set with these other nail grooming items, and they're useful for a lot of different things. Round rubber tip pliers. These are less scratchy on the metal. They can be used to further shape round and cone pieces. I got those tools in a little set in the jewelry making section at Walmart. I also have the heavy duty needle nose pliers. A book light with a clamp. Mandrels for shaping the round pieces. If you don't have those, of course, you could use various round objects like screws, pens, markers. You have to have really great vision to do these models. Or if you're like me, you have to go to the drugstore and get a pair of reading glasses or one of these things. Removing pieces. So the cuticle clippers are perfect for cutting the tabs really close to the part. Twisting them will make the cleanest break. A lot of other clippers I used, they left a little jagged edge, and I really don't like that. The cuticle clippers make the cleanest break. So I take them out one at a time, and I set them on my little magnet tray exactly as they appear in the directions. Before clipping them out, I inspect the part for weakness. Is one area skinny? Clip that part first, because physics. See, it's going to put less force on the sturdier side if you clip it here. If you clip this side first, it could cause that skinny side to bend. Whether you twist it out or clip it just depends on what's easier for the part you're working with. For the tiny parts, I clip all but one tab. I push it out from behind so the front does not get scratched, and then I twist it out. That way, the little tiny part won't go flying across the room. That's the, the force I'm talking about. See, when you clip it, the force can cause that thing to just go, go flying. Holding it with pliers while twisting can help to prevent that part from bending. Building tips. Round pieces. You can tell whether the round object that you're using to shape it is the right size because it'll roughly match the size as the little circle that's going to, like, cover the rounded piece. I start off by shaping it around something slightly larger. That way I can really like form that round shape. And then I move it down to the smaller size that matches what the end result is going to be. I just shape it a little, f a little bit further and then it, it's just right. Now when you push down that little circular tab, you want to brace it here when you push down that lid. And that way the rest of the part is not going to bend. If you have to stick a little tab through it, then you want to brace it up here when you push the tab through. Long, small panels. You, you want to line up your pliers with the dotted line. Press down on the larger panel. You want to apply even pressure with your fingers across the whole thing so one side doesn't get like warped. You could do it this way too. Or use the table. Bending tabs. How do you bend those little tiny tabs? For some of them, the best way is to twist them. The tricky parts tend to look like this. Attaching two pieces together or having many small tabs close to each other. You may want to use tweezers for this. 
If you find that just doing it this way is a challenge, just focus on perfecting this move. But for a more advanced technique, I like to twist the tab and then angle it at the end of that twist. And if I'm able to get leverage, I clamp that angled twisted tab down. If that move is too risky, I'll push the tab down with the tip of the pliers. I brace my fingers around the part so that it doesn't bend. This is something that kind of comes natural to me. It's because I've been doing things like this for a long time, but I realize maybe people are holding the model in a way that parts of it are going to get messed up when you're doing these moves. Uh, learn to be aware of where you're placing your fingers and think about like, how do I hold this thing so that it doesn't get warped? It's like a practice in being gentle. Bend or twist the tabs in supportive directions. Think of it like a claw machine claw. You want it to grab. If the tabs are going with each other, like they're bent in the same direction, the part's going to wobble back and forth. If you do it like I described, like a claw, even if it's not a super tight fit, it's only going to go up and down. It's not going to go like wobbling back and forth. And when they wobble, they the part can slip out of there too. So you don't want that. Sometimes one out of several tabs won't go in the hole. So what I do is I'll clamp down one of the tabs to keep it stable. Then I use the wooden stick to gently nudge that little wonky tab into position. The wooden stick is good because it's not going to scratch the metal. Sometimes scratched metal can make it really hard to see because of the way that it's reflecting the light everywhere. You can't even see what you're doing anymore at that point. How to avoid breaking pieces. The key is looking at it from a structural point of view and being slow and gentle. Look at the directions so that you understand the way that these parts are going to fit together. You have to avoid making a mistake because the more times that you bend that tab, the weaker it will be. I feel like I get about one mistake before I feel nervous that it's going to break. What I'm doing here is I'm grabbing this piece from an area that will transfer the least amount of force around the part when I bend it. The force is powerful, don't underestimate it. Here are a bunch of extra parts that I have left over. I'm guessing people probably break these ones a lot. With this type of piece, I use the round rubber tip pliers. I line them up with the little grooves on the piece, and I work around from one end to the other, shaping it with my fingers. Here. I line up the tip of the pliers with the dotted line on the part. These little jewelry pliers are nice because they don't have grooves in them. They're flat, and so you can grab those little tiny pieces really well. I do the same thing here, except with tweezers. Really, just lining up the straight lines on the parts with your tools is key to these eeny, teeny, eeny, weeny pieces. I could probably do a whole video on tiny parts. Uh, there's a lot of intricacies to each one, but I mean, really, that's like kind of the main, the main trick to them, I guess. Trouble with instructions. Are you really lost on a certain step? Well, guess what? You can go on YouTube and look at videos of people putting them together. There are channels who build models and talk about it. In my videos, I mostly just like... I'm all artsy fartsy. I'm not trying to show how you do each little step, but there's people who do show you and they give you tips on each model that they're doing while they're doing it. I would highly recommend these two channels, Animate Orange and Micro Raver. They're really good at explaining the little details on each step. And also they, the way that they film, you can see what they're doing. They put a lot of effort into making sure that you can tell what the heck is going on. I'll put the link to their channels in the description so you can check them out, subscribe to them. You know, they each do like different types of models. So one guy doesn't have the one you're looking for. The other guy might. Anyway, those are my tips. I hope they helped. Let me know. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you like my artsy fartsy videos, you know, you can keep tuning in. And this is little Katie. Peace and out.